Hello and welcome to Zoom In. This video is the first in a series on how the microscope works, how it magnifies and resolves the microscopic world for our education, enjoyment, and curiosity. This understanding will help us get the most out of our scopes and make the wisest choices if we seek to upgrade or buy accessories. As we look at the pieces and principles of the microscope, we will find information that ranges from the intuitive all the way up to the truly mind-boggling. So I hope you'll really enjoy the science of the microscope. In this particular episode, we'll be looking at light and really more specifically, how we will draw and represent light in this particular series. There will be three ways that we'll represent light in this series. And the purpose of this episode will be to introduce you to them and tell you how we're going to be using them to best describe how the microscope gives us these wonderful magnified images. First, we'll need to consider a source of light, a very small source that reflects or emits light. We're going to call this a point source, and it's represented here by this blue dot. Light will be emitted in waves from this dot in three dimensions, and we'll represent that light as wave fronts, waves, and rays. Each of these are simplifications of light and have their own strengths and weaknesses. No single way of representing light is maximally effective at explaining all the phenomena of light. So here I'll explain how we'll be using these various diagrams to best explain the properties of light. Wave fronts are great ways to represent light. They clearly illustrate that light radiates from a source in all directions. We will be using such drawings in the next video to illustrate why light can be bent or refracted by lenses in our microscope. Further on in the series, we will use the wave fronts to illustrate diffraction, a very complex subject that is ultimately at the heart of how images are formed. We can also see wave fronts by dropping any object in water. These, of course, are not light waves, but such demonstrations allow us to see wave fronts and their movement. Showing light in this classical presentation of waves makes very clear that light possesses qualities of waves. We'll be using this representation of light later on as it is very helpful in demonstrating what happens when waves of light interact with each other, leading to image formation. Drawing light as rays is the most clear way to show the path of light through the microscope, how light is focused, and how images are magnified. And we can model light rays with an LED pointer, which will be of great use in the next video when we look at the interaction of light and lenses. Now we should ask, what is the relationship between these three illustrations of light? Why are all three adequate representations of the same thing? Here's our image of wave fronts, and we can overlay waves onto the picture to see that the wave fronts in this drawing all coincide with the peaks of the waves. There are more complex ways to represent this, but for now, it is sufficient to illustrate that the wave fronts occur where the individual waves are aligned or are in phase. Simplifying the waves down to rays makes drawing light easier, and it shows the direction of light. But look very closely at how the rays interact with the wave front. We see that the rays are always perpendicular to the wave front. Remember this in the next episode when we talk about the bending of light by lenses. To understand the microscope and innovations such as cooler illumination and infinity lenses, we have to consider spherical waves and plane waves. We're going to be looking at wave fronts that are near to or distant from the point source. Now at first, this illustration is not going to look like it applies to the microscope at all, but later on we'll see that lenses have the ability to convert spherical waves to plane waves and vice versa. Here I've drawn arcs that illustrate what wave fronts would look like at given distances from the point source. At five centimeters from the source, the wave front looks very curved. But as the wave front moves further away from 25 centimeters to 50 to 200 centimeters, the part of the wave front we see becomes flatter and flatter. Light coming from an infinite distance away has a flat wave front. Well, you're thinking that your microscope is not infinitely long, but think of infinitely corrected microscopes. In these, 
we'll see that lenses generate flat wavefronts as if they come from infinitely far away. Now we look at the rays from various wavefronts. Close to the source of light, the rays are clearly pointing in different directions. But as we get further from the source, the rays we see get closer and closer to being parallel to each other. From a source infinitely far away, the rays are indeed parallel. Whether we're looking at light coming directly from a source or modified by a lens, the wave fronts can be arced, forming a spherical wave. Remember, we're in three dimensions. Or the wave front can be flat, also called planar, forming a plane wave. And thus, rays from a point source are diverging in a spherical wave. And rays in a plane wave are parallel. In this episode of How the Microscope Works, we looked at how to represent light. Of course, this is important because we want to see how lenses work. We want to follow the path of light through the microscope. We want to develop the tools that will help us understand how images are formed and many, many complex phenomena. So these three ways of representing light are going to be important. Each one of these ways will have certain strengths and weaknesses, and thus it's important that we understand all three and the relationship between them so that we can fully grasp the concepts that we'll be discussing in future episodes. So I hope this was very helpful and thank you very much for watching.